Hey guys, in this video, I will talk about the ductile detailing. So what is this and why we need it? So I will not be talking about how you do the ductile detailing. So I will do that in some other video. And in this particular video, I will only talk about what it actually means and why we need this. So it consists of two words that you can see over here. So one is uh, ductile, one is ductile and another is uh, detailing. So one is ductile and another is uh, detailing. Okay. So I'll explain these two words separately and then combine them. So let me first uh, talk about what actually is a uh, ductile. So ductile word is used for a material. So we say that this is a ductile material and this is not a ductile material. So something that is not ductile is actually brittle. So when you take a wood, let's say you take a wood and a small, uh, a small wooden section, not big. So, you know, like this. And when you apply load from here and also you apply the load from here, F and F. So what will happen? So after you reach at certain point, this wood will suddenly break into two parts. So why does this happen? This happens because this is the nature of this material. So this material, we say that it is brittle. Okay. So this is brittle because when it fails, it fails suddenly. So it doesn't give you any kind of signs that it is failing. But when you apply the same load to a steel rod so let's say that you take a steel rod you must have done this practical in your college days and when you apply the tensile force for f from here and also the tensile force f from here then what happens is that so this rod will not fail suddenly okay so you must have heard this word naking so it will slowly elongate and add somewhere in the center uh, or somewhere uh, where it is weak so what it will do is that it will first form this naking kind of thing right so naking kind of thing it will form like this okay and in the next step only it will break it will break like this into two parts so it will not break suddenly but it will show signs of breaking so if i show you the stress versus strain diagram then what you will see so this is uh, if i plot stress in the x-axis and if i plot strain in the y-axis for the brittle material the curve will look like uh, something like this okay so here the structure will fail So this is for the uh, brittle material, but for the ductile material, what it will look like. So this is my stress. This is my strain over here. Okay. So I'm just doing for this mild steel. First, the curve will be linear. After that, it will be something like this. Okay. Uh, this material gives up over here which means that this is my yielding point so yielding means that it gives up right it has lost its uh, strength to hold the forces but still you can see that it hasn't failed yet so until this point when the stress reaches over here only then it fails so this is my failing point only then it fails right so you can see a long gap between the yielding point and the failing point so this is the property of the ductile material. So they don't fail suddenly, but they take a time to fail and they show the certain signs that they are failing. So next thing that comes over here is the term detailing. So detailing means, so detailing means that providing, so providing the reinforcement or the rebars in the concrete structures concrete structures okay so we know that uh, we know that concrete is very good in taking the compression force but it is very poor in taking the tensile force so due to this reason what we do is that we provide the steel rebars in it so that it can take the tensile force as well so when we provide the reinforcement or the rebars in the concrete we say that is structure to be reinforced cement concrete or rcc so these rcc structures they are 
partly ductile. Okay, they are ductile. Yes, the plain concrete is brittle. The RCC is partly ductile. So what we can do to make it completely ductile? Before that, we need to understand why we need to make any structure ductile. So let's say that this is your building. Okay, this is your building where you live, and you live on the second floor. You live over here. And let's say that suddenly there is earthquake. Okay, so there is earthquake, and within one second this building collapses. Okay, so will you prefer to live in this kind of structure? Definitely not, right? So what we do is that we make our structure ductile, right? So we make our structure ductile so that when there is earthquake. Okay, so we cannot prevent the earthquake. This structure doesn't collapse suddenly. So this gives you time to run from here and get to a safer place somewhere outside. So this time span, this structure must provide to you. For this, it shouldn't collapse suddenly, but must give you certain signs that now it is going to collapse. This can only be achieved if your structure is a ductile structure. So and and we can make our structure ductile by providing the reinforcement or by doing the detailing properly, okay? And that kind of detailing which makes our structure ductile is known as ductile detailing. Ductile detailing. So if you have studied the Indian Standard Code, you must have designed your structural members using IS four fifty six two thousand, okay? So this code will give you uh, information on how much reinforcement area you must provide and what should be the spacing and how you should provide the reinforcement. So that idea is not sufficient to make the structure ductile. So for making the structure ductile, you have to do some additional things, and those additional things, those additional things, are mentioned in IS thirteen nine two zero. So latest version is two thousand sixteen. Okay, and if you go through this code, you will find all those things that you must do so that your structure is ductile, and you are doing the ductile detailing. And what are those? And how do we do that for our structural members? That we will see in the coming videos.